Welcome to the third episode of Rhythm and Junction with Marcus on ML Radio Audiovisual Podcast. Today we are going to talk about sex in African society. My guest tonight is a medical anthropologist, feminist, activist and scholar of sexualities. She holds three degrees from Macquarie University and University of London. She specialized in the study of human sexualities. She was arrested and imprisoned twice for offensive communication and cyber harassment of President Yoweri Museveni. She was recently released from maximum security prison in February of this year. I prefer calling you Professor Stella Nyazi. Call me Stella. But since we're going to talk about, Stella talks about sex and society, call me Nalungu as well. Nalungu. Choose whatever you want. Because like when someone hears the name Stella, mm. quickly associates it to sex. Make us understand the definition of sex, leaving the geographical and the historical bit of it aside. As it's spelled in English, S-E-X, it has very many translations in different languages. In Luganda, it could range from Okwegata to Okwegadanga to Okwezina to Okutomba to Okutombagana to Okwekabala, okay? To call a Yabusurisuru, to call a Yabakuru, to call a Yabigipu. And so why this is important is because we must understand that different cultures, different societies appreciate and approach sex differently. Sex is very innocent. As I said to you, it's a three-letter word. But it's a heavily politicized three-letter word. For example, if a young girl is in class and she says, sex, teacher, his, this student did me sex. Yeah, they would perceive it in the other the shaming way. The whole school way. will stop. They'll have a school assembly. The teachers will be a panic, in panic because a girl in P3 has said, excuse me, teacher, this boy did me sex. What is doing me sex? What does it mean? Does sex mean that someone said your gender is male or female or other? Because if we go to fill in forms, someone says to you, what's your sex? Your marketers will say I'm male, Stella will say I'm female, some people will say I'm transgender, some people will say I'm intersexual, some people will say I'm genderless, some people will say I'm multigendered, right? And so even just trying to define what is your sex... But leaving the gender difficult. bit of it aside. I think it's important to talk about gender because what sex is for women is very different to what sex is for men. Many times young women think he's had sex to, with me, he wants to marry me. Yet the male partner is thinking she's had sex with me, I know what she's like, my next conquest. He's moved on. She's getting committed, he's moved on. Sex and gender are really important. You can't talk about sex without talking about gender. But also your expectations are, uh, uh, from sex are shaped depending on your gender. And like I said for me, that the third element which you want to walk away from is the idea that there are more than just two genders. I told you there are transgender people and there are intersex people. That's gender. It's important because when a transgender woman, a person born with your sort of body, they have a penis and scrotum and balls and whatever, testosterone as men, feels they are a woman trapped in a man's body and they're selling sex to men. Are they homosexual people? Okay. She feels she's a woman. She believes she's a woman, but she was born with a penis. When she's selling sex, she doesn't sell sex as a man. And so many times my sisters who are transgender on the streets of Kampala have been arrested. And when the police uh, check their bodies, they do body searches. They discover, ah! He had a penis all along. Hey, he's pretending to be what he's not. And this sister, they take off her wig, they take off her artificial nails, they remove her high heels, and they shame her, walk her before the cameras as a homosexual man selling sex. What do you say about the public judgment? I think, first of all, I speak as a person who's studied sexualities for over 20 years. My research and education for the last 25 
plus years has really been in the area of gender and sexualities. When you say to me, what do you think about how the public thinks of these people? I'll say to you, what public? Okay? Because when I'm in the communities where there are very many transgender people, in Entebbe, in Chitoro, in Kampala, that public of very many transgender women who sell sex, they think it's really normal. This is who they are. They don't understand why they are called shaitani. My name is Imubano. Eh? Why they are called mad. She's mentally sick. Look at her. She's pretending. She thinks she's a girl. Okay? Because for them, they really have accepted their transgender identity. The perceptions of those who judge them negatively often are from people who are ignorant, who are uninformed, and who have not experienced this thing. If you don't have a sister who was born with a penis but walks around like a girl, you'd never understand why this group of women do it, right? I think that there are very many conservative restrictions for men. A good man must be strong. He must not cry. He must... Okay? And those gender expectations affect what we think of men who don't meet the standard. A man who wants to be like a woman. Eh? A man who bends over and is penetrated by another man. We think very, very low of them. We think they are sinners. We think they are stupid. We think they are un-African. They are ashamed to men. Right? Those are the perceptions that are out there. Many times they are called for counseling by pastors who find that they, 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 according to scripture, these people are demon-possessed. In Buganda, such a man would be called Jakula Shikazi. Or a woman who, a person born with a, a vagina who walks around as a man and believes she's a man trapped in a woman's body is called Shakula Sajja. Okay? People don't wake up one day and become transgender. They are born like that. Many of them are born like that. Okay? Many other people come into themselves when suddenly a boy begins getting morning wood. In, in, in the morning, eh! Mutaka is up. Right? And then this young boy is feeling very embarrassed because all along he's been playing with his sisters and cooking with the girls. And he's usually the, the bridesmaid. He doesn't want to be the bridegroom. He doesn't want to be a man when, when, when they're acting daddy and mommy or wedding, wedding. He wants to be a girl. And then suddenly Mutaka is saluting to the whole world. And sometimes the maladjustment starts there. When people laugh at him and say, but you're a boy. When the voice breaks, you're a boy. And inwardly, he's fighting with himself. And he's like, actually, my mind says I'm a girl. I really hate this thing. I hate the beard. I hate the chest. So it, does, it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. Many times, because the families where we come are very conservative, these children have to either be girls or be boys. In Gayaza, when I was there, we had uh, Juliet Kagwa. When we were busy having our menstrual periods, Juliet suddenly realized he was having erections. Erection, In the morning, he'd have erections, yes. Juliet walked like a boy, and we all loved Juliet. Juliet today is Julius Kagwa. He's had the surgery, he's had the therapy, the hormonal therapy to help him become the man that he is. He even furthered yes. biology. But, mouse. Doctor, look at a situation where some ladies or some girls mm. will tell you that I'm only attracted to men or to guys who have like big dicks, let's say. Based on my research, I know that sex is not about the size of your genitalia. Sex doesn't depend on what your organs look like. Sex begins here. If you have it right here, if your mind has it right, you don't even need a big penis to make your lover orgasm. Sometimes it will just take a finger, okay? And so I think that the question which many young men have about sexual performance, they want a big bamboo, they want a big cassava. Look, sexual pleasure is sexual pleasure. We cannot have a one size fits all. It's not like a condom. Eh? One size of a condom fits all of them if they are big, the condom will go. If they're small, the condom will go. That is not sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is very individual. It's very personal. Maybe the girl wants a big cassava. Give her her big cassava. But then the cassava size does not determine how sweet the eating of that cassava is. Okay? I know that there are women for whom the fetish is size. 
There are very many other women who, who prefer clitoris stimulation. Eh? Cha -cha 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 on top. There are some who like doggy. Doggy with a big cassava will kill you. You'll be screaming for, 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 for donkey's ears, right? And so I think that individual pleasure is very much determined by the individual, what their knowledge is, how their path, uh, partner performs, etc., etc., how much they're exposed to pleasuring, the act of pleasuring, right? And many have fallen for the illusion that the bigger the better. If it's even the men, mm -hmm. like uh, I've known of guys who say that me, I'm only attracted to ladies with hips. The, like everything is attached, everything is attached to Preference. at least a specific future in individuals. Preference is individual. I can't blame anybody who wants a woman with hips. Give them the hips. <laughs> and there are those who want sex for money. Totally, sex work. I, I support the idea that sex work is sex work. I have had people calling my sisters who sell sex, mariahs, prostitutes, hookers, etc. etc. Why do you support it? When in a Let us like... first talk about the labels, my brother. Because the word prostitute is judgment. You're judging a woman who sells sex in exchange either for cash or services, the vast majority of women, including women who are married in church, exchange their sexual services for rent. But in most cases, you'll find that it's a, it's a bad practice. Like it's a what bad practice. Like, according to listen the perception to we have. Listen to me. Most women in Uganda who have sex today have sex, especially heterosexual women, women who have sex with men. Most of us have sex for a reason. Okay? I'm going to have sex with my husband so that he can pay rent. I'm going to have sex with my husband so that he cannot go to the other woman. It's always transactional, always. What is bad about transaction when the vast majority of us do it? The problem with exchange in terms of sex is when it's exploitative. When there are pimps and managers and mamas and madams in these brothels organizing organized sex work where Poorer women are brought in, often induced to substances, eh? alcohol, drugs, etc., so they are unconscious for money that does not benefit the individual but benefits the master, the pimp, the manager. That form of exploitative sex, I can condemn. But sex work is work. Sex work is work. Thank you. We're going for a very short break, and when we return, we are still discussing with sexy Stella Nyanzi, oh. Professor Nalongo on sex and African society.